us now, no stranger to the world of politics, the former governor of the state of New Jersey, Jim Florio. Governor, welcome back. Thank you very much. When, when you hear all of this going on, the, the machinations of getting the party ready for a run, do you, do you miss that at all? Well, I remember the words of Will Rogers, that he doesn't belong to any organized party, he's a Democrat. <laughs> so we have a long tradition of doing that sort of thing. Does the party get stronger? Do you well, think as actually a result? it does. It probably does. And you have that healthy inter interaction. And in terms of um, divisions, I mean, I think that probably the Republican Party, the difference between the national and New Jersey Republicans are more glaring. Uh, a lot there is of, a big disconnect there, isn't there? A big disconnect. And I mean, moderate Republicans in the uh, party in New Jersey uh, trying to figure out some way to avoid the stigma of being anti-immigrant and against the minimum wage and things of that sort, which is p sort of public policy for the national organization. When you see the campaign as it's evolved so far, with the governor being considerably ahead in the polls right now, and well ahead in fundraising as well, there are those who say that this really could have an impact as well, perhaps on the balance of power in the Assembly or in the Senate. Uh, when, do you think we're in a situation right now where there could be that kind of, because of, uh, of Christie coattails, there could be that kind of seismic shift? Well, I think coattails no longer exist uh, that much anywhere. I mean, uh, we've seen that on occasions in the past. And I think um, probably people are sort of underestimating Barbara. I mean, do not you underestimate her at your peril. And the governor's too smart to, to underestimate her, so he's going to campaign hard. She's very intelligent, as you know. She's articulate. She's substantive. She talks to people as adults. So, I mean, um, it's going to be a race. It'll be much, much tighter. Let's talk about an issue near and dear to your heart. That's, the, of course, the gun control issue. During your term in office, uh, you made considerable progress yes. in terms of gun control. And right now we see the Democrats themselves seem to be battling amongst themselves over whether or not the gun control legislation they're offering up is compatible from the Senate to the House uh, to the Assembly and vice versa. Are, do you think the Democrats are moving in the right direction on this right now? Well, I think the, the right direction is to deal with this whole problem of the epidemic of gun violence, not only here in New Jersey, but of course across the nation. And it would be better if we did things at a national level, but absent that, we have to do things in New Jersey. Uh, we have strong laws. We're making them strong. There are a couple of loopholes. I mean, one of the things that's really strange to me on the national level as well as at the state level, we spend taxpayer monies to outfit our police with vests to protect them. And then we do nothing about armor-piercing cop killer bullets. So there are a lot of things, that, gaps that we should fill. Do you think at this point, I mean, for those who resist the notion of taking this one step further, and they say, well, basically, we've, we've got some of the tightest gun control laws in the state. We've got some of the lowest crime rates in the country. You know, it's, now it's just a question of getting guns out of the hands of bad guys. Do you think well, it's, it's, it's a little more complicated than that? I mean, that, we obviously want to do some of that. But, for example, trafficking of guns. Most of the problems we have in New Jersey are for guns that come in from out of state. Um, people store purchases. Somebody purchases a gun legally and then gives it to somebody who could not qualify for the gun. Um, the, one of the bills in the, in the House deals with that problem in a, in a much more stringent way than the current existing law does. Well, we saw, I mean, the efforts recently died uh, in Congress. Uh, you served, of course, as a um, member of Congress as well. I mean, that's how, shameful. That, how, that, is, how, that is really shameful. I mean, we have a situation where they didn't even want to take up the issue of dealing with um, background checks. I mean, how is it you argue that someone who's on a terrorism list and can't get on a plane can buy a gun? It makes no sense whatsoever. But it's testimony to the power of the gun lobby. Well, the gun lobby was there, though. I mean, when you were in Congress, the gun lobby was there as well. How is it different now? Well, what we did, we energized the people in the state, got them engaged and got them informed. And we did that with coalitions of people. And the, the gun lobby relies upon its strategy whenever the hard times come for them of just running out the clock. They'll stall and do everything possible to get people to be disengaged. So we have to really keep up the pressure. I think most sensible people, most gun people that I know, sports people, hunters, they have a, a lot of support for some of the things that the NRA, for example, um, doesn't support. The whole idea of saying, well, this, after the Newtown massacre, the argument about gun violence, the NRA's response was, well, you need more guns. That's, that's insanity. Do you think, I mean, you take a look at the polls right now, it's pretty clear where the public stands, yet the NRA still has that kind of clout. So well, from your side, from your perspective, what do you do about that? Well, you've got to mobilize people. I mean, the history is full of examples. But you already have the 80% of the people with you. What I mean, else is it going to matter? But you've got to mobilize people to become involved in the political process. I mean, 
history is full of examples of small cadres of people who are well disciplined, well financed, being able to prevail over the public interest. It is only as we did in New Jersey, when you get the general public engaged, that you can have good outcomes. Governor, time has gone by too quickly. We have to leave it there. Thank you, sir. Good to see you.